This is what I'm dubbing the Milton Dresser, part of our Milton collection at Daily Woodworks. This is my take on the classic shaker design with some modern elements like soft closed drawers, modern colors, and finishes. And today I'm going to show you how to make it. So if you want a dresser like this, one, you can go to our website and order one and we will custom design and make it exactly what you need it to be. Um, but for our fellow woodworkers and craftsmen out there, we do have a set of plans available so you can make this um, over at the recreationalwoodworker.com. So as you've seen is I've been laminating our legs together. Um, I didn't have two inch stock available, so I just glued up my legs. I did it slightly oversized. They ended up being about a quarter inch larger and about a half inch longer than what I need my finish size to be. And then I just glued them all up together. While those were drying, I started working on the face frame. We did overlay drawers so we could do a hardware less finish. Uh, we didn't want drawer pulls or anything like that kind of detracting from the wood grain. Um, so by doing overlay drawers, I was able to route out a cove in the drawer faces to act as a pull. When we're assembling the face frame, we are using spacer blocks, which are either scrap wood or the styles that separate um, each drawer just to make sure I'm getting it perfectly aligned. For this particular project, we used red oak for the body and we stained it a dark black and we used white oak for the drawer faces and then did a simple clear coat on them. Um, that's going to be kind of our standard uh, materials, white oak. Um, red oak is a little bit cheaper, um, of course. And then we can do walnuts, pecan, all the different woods that you can think of. Again, I'm using spacer blocks or just scrap wood that I cut to the exact size I need it to be and using that to lay out. That way there's no possibility of mistakes. For the dresser, we go with a seven drawer layout. We have four larger drawers and then three smaller drawers on top. This could easily be customized to be more of an entertainment center by doing cubbies on the top for you know your game consoles and things like that. Whenever we're doing a stain grade project, I always pre-sand everything to its final grit before assembly. That way I can just make sure I get everything that has to be gotten. And you can see me marking out with pencil lines, making sure I don't miss anything, and then carefully sanding everything. There are several ways we could have done our sides. One way would have been using three quarter inch plywood to just screw it together and then trim it out. That would have been fine. But we went with a true five piece style. Um, and here I'm routing everything out to do that. By doing the five piece style, it allows for wood movement and actually saves weight a little bit because we're able to use a lighter weight center panel than a solid three quarter inch sheet of plywood would be, saving that weight while keeping the strength that we need. Now I'm moving back over to my track saw table to use my trusty track saw. If you've followed my channel for a while, you know that I'm a huge fan of track saws and I could not operate my shop as efficiently as I do without it, obviously, you know. A big $50,000 sliding sable saw and a big warehouse shop would be phenomenal, but this is how I roll. So I don't use quarter inch plywood in any of my projects. So what I'm doing is I'm using half inch plywood for that center panel and now I'm routing out or I'm rabbiting to create that quarter inch tongue to fit into my quarter inch groove. I like half inch because if you do anything with quarter inch plywood it's going to sound really hollow like a drum and I just don't like honestly the way it sounds and I like the feel and the heft and the strength that half inch provides so I do that for my drawer bottoms as well so here you can see I'm assembling that five piece side panel same way you do a cabinet door I'm using dominoes of course um, instead of doing a tongue and groove bit because 
I didn't have a great router table, but now I do have a great router table, so I'll start doing that because it's faster. Strength-wise, either or is just as good. It's just this takes a little bit longer with the dominoes. So after I get it assembled, again, I pre-sanded everything, clamp it up onto my panel clamp, and just move on to the next step. And that is finishing our legs. So the first thing I had to break them apart and now I'm using my 1930s hand plane to get the glue squeeze out and get everything even on essentially two faces so that I can just take it to the table saw and cut it to its final size. Using a hand plane is always fun. I really enjoy it. So again, I cut, I made these about a quarter inch oversized, so I'm just kind of shaving down each side, making sure it's nice and square, and then I have my two inch square legs. Once I have them cut to size, I then clamp them all together and sand them all together. This makes sure that everything is consistent. Um, that way I remove all my saw marks, get everything smooth. And that way I keep nice sharp edges because I have plenty of purchase for my sander to rest on. Now we are ready for assembly. And again, I'm using my Festool Domino here as well. Um, you could do this a couple of different ways. You could do this with biscuits if you have a biscuit joiner. Um, you could even drill a pilot hole through the face frame with a countersink bit and then just drive a wood screw um, from the face frame into the leg to do what you need to do. But I like the mortise and tendon strength that a domino gives you, so that's what I'm doing here. Making sure I use plenty of glue, getting everything aligned, and then milling everything up. I didn't count how many dominoes I used in this project. Um, I'm sure someone could extrapolate the math if they care based on the video. I I don't know, I'm not analytical enough to, to count every domino. Um, it would be kind of cool to know how many went into this, but, you know, whatever. Um, making sure I get all the glue squeeze out quick, fast, and in a hurry, because glue and stain does not mix well. I think this project was the closest I've come to using every clamp I owned. So once everything had sufficient time to dry, I unclamped it all and now I'm going to start assembling um, our side panels because they're dry now too. And then that was again just making sure I laid everything out correctly. Um, like kind of that three eighths of an inch, quarter inch reveal um, creates a nice little shadow line. Um, and just works really good with this style of furniture. Nice, simple, clean, but pleasing to the eye. Whenever I'm doing domino work like this, I like to use the tight setting on one piece and then the looser setting or the middle setting on the other piece. This allows me that little bit of adjustment as I'm assembling. That way if I didn't quite get on my mark just perfectly, I have that little bit of wiggle room to dial in the fit that way I'm getting it as perfect as possible during assembly and that way there's less sanding to do less touch-ups to do less oh crap how am I gonna fix this kind of stuff and just taking my time to really make sure I'm getting that layout right from the get-go doesn't always happen but this project overall went pretty smooth here's a close-up of that assembly you can see okay I'm now getting all the glue in there and now we're going to stick it together. I went ahead and milled up the back leg too so I can get that attached and clamped all at once. Um, gravity's working with me, 
so that helps and now we're just going to clamp it up and then I always use these little squaring blocks to help me assemble. And this just makes sure everything dries square. Um, if you can make that happen, it just keeps everything easier. And then again, again, double checking that glue squeeze out, making sure I have all of that taken care of. Now on the back, I am rabbiting out a rabbit for my plywood back. I'm using a half inch plywood back on this for strength and then allows me something to mount the uh, little cleats for our undermount drawer slides to mount into. And this is just a stretcher I'm installing and then I'll cut the plywood to go on the back side. I decided not to do a solid bottom on this. One, because it's not necessary, and two, it just would have added more weight. You know, this is a piece of furniture that's gonna move with my customers. So having it where it's not a billion pounds just makes sense. And it's, again, it's not necessary on this. So just having that stretcher there to make sure everything's held at the proper distance. And now we're gonna cut our back to put on there. Again, using that half inch plywood because it gives the strength that I need or want rather um, and this reinforces everything this makes sure to pull everything into square and then I'm just making that a nice tight fit and then I'll glue and staple that on Once the back is glued and stapled on, um, this piece, the body of this piece is essentially done. I add a few more just spacing blocks and cleats here and there. Um, I do one in the center. If you look closely, you can see it's kind of sagging in the middle, but it's kind of hard to see with the way my lens is set up. So I just add a little block of wood there, make sure it is tight on each side so I'm not overspreading it or underspreading it because that will affect the squareness of our drawers later on. And now we're ready to stand it up and move on to the next step. And that is making the top. I staged my builds because again, I don't have a huge shop. So the body was done, which meant all of my clamps were free again. So now I can glue up the top. Once the top is glued up, I can then move on to the next process. Um, my tops are simple I cut my boards about an inch longer than they need to be as I rip them down and joint them I make sure it's about half inch wider than I need it to be and then I cut it down to size when I build my table tops again I'm using my fez tool domino to get those one that wood reinforcement and two that makes sure to hold all of my boards nice and flat that way there's less sanding involved and saw my daughters they were I think going swimming that day if I remember correctly also with this piece I designed it in SketchUp like I do all my furniture pieces but since it was the first time I made it I also wanted to quadruple check that everything translated correctly from SketchUp to reality because sometimes you have to tweak a few things because it just doesn't quite work like you thought it would and that's our little poodle. Um, she's sweet and she likes hanging out with me whenever um, everyone inside is gone somewhere. And she does great in the shop and is a very, very good dog. I have a full playlist over the Festool Domino, how to use it, how to use the different attachments, and how I do different things with it. It really is one of my most used tools, um, and it really allows me to do what I do with the level of quality that I want to produce quickly, efficiently, things like that. So it's well worth it. I use it for tons of stuff, and here's just one more example of it. 
Our drawer fronts are a five piece drawer front. Um, and same thing I did with those five piece uh, side panels earlier is I'm ripping everything to size. I'm quadruple measuring um, for half inch overlay drawers. You need your drawer front to be an inch taller and inch wider. So you've got to make sure you're subtracting, you know, the width of your rails and styles, adding everything up. So when you do this, cut, measure, check, then batch cut. Never batch cut without double checking at least your first cut to make sure everything is right. Again, ask me how I know that because I've done that before where I've made tons of drawer fronts or made a whole run of drawers the wrong size because I didn't double check that first one. So once I double checked it, you can see I'm batching everything out and then I'm just gonna run my groove, build them with Festool dominoes. Again, now that I have my super nice router table, I can use a rail and style bit. Um, but right now I'm still using my in the table saw one, which I still have. It's always nice to have more than one router table. And now same thing as before, especially with stain grade. You want to sand everything before assembly because if you miss something, it's going to be really hard to get to. Now, if you're painting, that's not as critical because if, oh, you paint a spot and it's like rough or doesn't look great, you just spot sand it and then touch it up. But if your stain looks splotchy, then your stain just looks splotchy. So again, I'm quadruple checking my layout and making sure I label everything. And then I will be ready to start milling up my mortises. This is the Domino Dock by Ramon Valdez. I have, again, done a video over this in my Vestal Domino playlist. Um, great accessory. It makes milling small parts like this so much faster. And you can see I've got a block of wood there to act as a kind of a makeshift guard for safety and to make sure, you know, my hands are properly out of the way, hold everything in place like it needs to be. I think he's partnered with Seneca Woodworking and they now make an accessory that kind of does what I'm doing with my blocks of wood and spring clamps. Um, I need to look at that and get it. Um, I'm sure it's worth it. And again, mark all of your pieces so you know what goes where. Uh, you can't over mark something. It sands out, so just mark them. That way I'm making sure I get everything aligned how it needs to be. Now for our floating panel on these five piece drawers is I went with solid white oak and I made sure that as I did my drawers, I kept the grain lines continuous. I don't know if you can see that really well from the picture, but if you look closely, you'll see that the grain just carries over from one drawer front to the next. Again, I left it about a half inch thick and then routed out that groove to hold the panel. This is just a little finished end I'm doing on the drawer fronts. So that way you don't have that, you know, when you route it, you run the groove all the way through. And so you have that exposed joint. So you fill that in with a domino. And again, just a nice little visual detail. I like these little visual details of exposed joinery. Um, some people don't, and that is fine. That is completely personal preference, but that's what I like. So that's what I do. Now I'm doing a cleat for the top. And you can see I'm just kind of marking out. I've got to notch that out. I made sure this block was square. Again, this helps hold the project square. And then it's just attached with wood glue and pocket screws. Now for attaching the top, you don't need to go and do like the fancy Z clips and all these different things. What I do is I drill an oversized hole and use a washer head screw. And that allows for the wood movement that you need. Staining this was done with Minwax True Black Stain. Um, I have a video over how to properly sand your projects and I've just through trial and error discovered that I don't really need to go above 120 grit when I'm sanding. Um, and that makes sure my stain actually takes really well and I get nice darker, richer colors. Sorry for the vertical footage. Um, I think I put this on my Instagram page after I was done with it. So I've got it stained with the Minwax True Black Stain. The red oak gave it this nice little kind of reddish brown undertone that I really liked. And I was really happy with this. Drawers are solid maple. 
done with exposed domino joints for looks and then we did those undermount drawer slides that are just attached to that back panel and very easy to do. Here I am marking out where I'm going to mount my drawer fronts. I had to be very careful because my rails and styles were quite narrow on this so I had to make sure that my screw didn't go in the wrong place and didn't come through my front panel and luckily I missed all of that so none of no remakes had to happen. You can also see that cove that I routed out for our drawer pulls which worked very well. And here's our finished piece. Um, I named this Milton Collection after my grandpa um, because it's kind of that classic shaker look. It's simple, it's robust, it's going to last a long time, and it's just nice to look at. Nothing flashy or ornamental. These are nightstands that I made to go with this, and that video will be the next one I release, and I will also have a set of plans for those as well. Thank you for watching this episode of Daily Woodworks, and we will see you next time.